Judge Joe Brown's all new barbecue sauce and seasoning, justice in the form of flavor. Law firms will take this as a retainer. What? It must be a law firm when they hungry as hell. Now you gonna help me with this parole I'm dealing with? Judge Joe Brown's all new barbecue sauce and seasoning, justice in the form of flavor. With one taste of our premium blends of all natural ingredients, herbs, and spices, mm, you'll fall in love with meat all over again. Judge Joe Brown's all natural barbecue sauce collection is made up of two zesty flavors, original and spicy. There's only one way to bring order back to barbecuing. Just add Judge Joe Brown's all natural barbecue sauce and seasoning and you be the judge. you as I go through the topics did you so I'm going to start with Byron Donalds Congressman Donalds um did you hear that the Democrats particularly Hakeem Jeffries was accusing him of saying black people had a better under Jim Crow did you see or hear any did you hear that story because it went viral yeah he denied that that was the case what he was making was some observations of conditions that were in existence, he was not conflating the observation of circumstances relative to the family with Jim Crow causing them to be better. Exactly. That's mental. That's called reading, comprehension, cognition. It displays on behalf of the Democrats a lack of those things that uh, indicate advanced intelligence and ability to make discernment so what else is new so i want to play this clip of hakeem jo i can't stand him one of the reasons why i can't stand him is he has done nothing for black americans never spoke anything on it he his focus is making sure that he climbs that political ladder you know I, he wants to be house speaker and he is pro-israel one thousand percent um but this is him on the house floor accusing um, Byron Donalds. And then I want to play Byron Donalds um, reply. Mr. Speaker, it's come to my attention that a so-called leader has made the factually inaccurate statement that black folks were better off during Jim Crow. That's an outlandish, outrageous, and out-of-pocket observation. We were not better off when a young boy named Emmett Till could be brutally murdered without consequence because of Jim Crow. We were not better off when black women could be sexually assaulted without consequence because of Jim Crow. We were not better off when people could be systematically lynched without consequence because of Jim Crow. We were not better off when children could be denied a high quality education without consequence because of Jim Crow. We were not better off when people could be denied the right to vote without consequence because of Jim Crow. How dare you make such an ignorant observation? You better check yourself before you read You know yourself. what? He didn't make that observation. You ignorant fool <laughs> dealing with your vile propaganda trying to falsely claim that he did. And by the way, I just got through talking to Dr. Clonora Hudson Weems, who was designated by Emmett Till's mother as the family biographer. I'm writing a foreword or an introduction for her latest book. So that's been preoccupying me. And anyway, uh, they wouldn't agree with that. And by the way, again, I was personally acquainted for quite some years with uh, Emmett Till's mother. Mm -hmm. Spoke with her quite a few times. Had lunch with her a few times. So and, and Congress, they 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 didn't. They have done. They have not done anything to try to see any type of justice. No, they haven't. And the so-called Emmett Till anti-lynch bill has nothing to do with black folk. It's interjecting sexual orientation into the national lexicon. And as a matter of fact, it removes killing somebody as a requirement to be prosecuted for federal lynching. And it doesn't require a mob. It can only it can be as much few as one person and they don't have to kill somebody. Let's say they bust somebody in the jaw because they found out 
that it was a tranny they were dancing with on the floor of a club. That's now federal lynching. So what did it do for black folk? They still haven't done anything. Right. Okay, well, let's hear the brother here. I'll shut up. America, Joe Biden's campaign is lying to you once again and they're gaslighting. Now they're trying to say that I said black people were doing better under Jim Crow. I never said that. They are lying. But why would you be surprised? Because they always lie. This is the same Joe Biden that said, if you don't vote for him, then you ain't black. The man is a liar. Sorry, just call it what it is. What I said was, is that you had more black families under Jim Crow. And it was the Democrat policies uh, under HEW, under the welfare state, that did help to destroy the black family. That's what I said. And I also said you're seeing a reinvigoration of black families today in America. And that is a good thing. So don't listen to the lies from the Biden administration. I know what I said, and I'll say it straight to camera. They got to run to the Philadelphia Inquirer to move their lies. Joe Biden does not care about black people. He never has. He cares about power first, second, and third. They can go somewhere with all that. See ya. And you know what else? I studied body language intensively, and I used it a lot in trying cases as a defense lawyer. And his body language, the nods of the heads, the shakes of the heads, what he's doing is appropriate to what he's saying. If you're saying he's lying and you're positively nodding, you believe he's lying. But when the Democrats speak, they'll say he's lying and they'll shake their heads in a negative because it's a contrivance. I am going to do this for you. And they're shaking their heads negatively because your body language is unconsciously telling you that they're lying. Watch that sometimes. If you see a politician that likes to stick his hands in his pocket or one hand in his pocket, that means that you are deception. You see Obama, he's always got one hand in his pocket when he talks to you which means he's giving you partial realities and he's concealing something very important while he's talking. These things are interesting and they say a lot. Um, so this is what he actually said because um, Byron Donalds and I think his name, Walter Hunt, he's a Republican out of Texas. They, they are doing a Republican outreach, particularly to the black community, black men. And they were in Philadelphia. Um, and they went to, they went into Philadelphia last week, I believe. Yeah. And, and had this, um, sit down, I guess it was a cigar lounge. And last week was, um, when, Biden and Kamala went to Philadelphia to kick off the black voter coalition, right? So the fake negris. Yeah. The you know, did you see him shit his pants today? Child, that's already in the title. We're gonna get to that. That's why I said I said I'm gonna bring I didn't tell you what we're gonna talk about, but that is on the list. That that's, is, that's the main event. <laughs> it's like damn. That's, that's the main event. All right, so let me play this clip. This is this is what he originally said that Hakeem Jeffries and the Democrats are gonna try and twist. I grew up with my mom. My dad and my mom, things didn't work out. As an adult, I look at my father and I say, bro, I don't know what happened, but you my father and I love you. Wow. I don't know what happened. I wasn't there. Wow. But I'm gonna tell you this. Coming growing up, the one thing I knew I wanted to do. And this is not about my father. This is about what I wanted to do. Is I wanted to be a father to myself. Wow. All right. All right. And so one of the things that's actually happening in our culture, which you're now starting to see in our politics, is the, re in, the reinvigoration of black families with younger black men and black women. And that is also helping to breed the revival of a black middle class in America. You see, during Jim Crow, during Jim Crow, the black family was together. During Jim Crow, more black people were not just conservative, because black people always have been conservative minded, but more black people voted conservatively. And then HEW, Lyndon Johnson, and then you go down that road, and now we are where we are. What's happened in America the last 10 years, and I say it because it's my contemporaries, it's Wesley's contemporaries, you're starting to see more black people be married. 
in homes, raising kids. It's when you home with your wife raising your kids, and then you look at the world, you're saying, now wait a minute, time out. This does not look right. How can I get something to my kids? It goes back to the conversation of generational wealth. Not just having a job, generational wealth. I'm looking at my kids, how can my kids be on my shoulders when they take off in life? That's what's happening. going on during Jim Crow. Okay, so so that was his that's the that he only referenced that during Jim Crow, black families, you had a lot of married black couples, a lot of black families with the mother and father in the household. And that is true if you do the research to whereas now compared to now, it dropped significantly by 40%. So he wasn't saying black people had a better, but I want to ask you a question. Well, I grew up with my mom and dad. Uh mm -hmm. Everybody grew up with their moms and dads. And when I was doing it, Jim Crow was still in effect. So, yeah. To whereas it's not have... because of Jim Crow that we grew up with our parents. It's just during that era that was what was going on. It's not a conflation of cause and effect. It's just an observation on contemporaneity. Uh, contemporaneous with Jim Crow, there were strong black families, strong black families were, were there as were strong families, white, black, brown, red, yellow. Mm -hmm. So, But compared to now, you don't see a lot of strong black families in today, modern times. It, you it, see that too many people who are saying that for some reason they buy into the propaganda that something's wrong with black men and black right. males so that ranges from politics to law like right now the funniest damn thing is there are more black female judges in america than there are black male judges uh more black females in law school than black males in law school etc cetera, etc cetera. and many more black females in college than black males well, I What's wanna... going on? Well, right here in Memphis, Shelby County, we had a thing that was interesting. In this school system, the students that are doing the absolute best are black females, and some of the absolute worst are black males. And an analysis that got done was that because so many of the teachers are black females that the young black female identifies with her teacher and nobody else does the hispanic male is doing the absolute worst followed by the black male and then above that low income white males and everybody's females across the board are doing better than everybody's males except in the upper echelons of economic status why is that? So because during Jim Crow and all throughout the civil rights movement and stuff, um, you would you say that black men and black women were elevating educationally on the same level? That a it's just a coincidence. In other words, until you get to the 1980s, all over the country, what was going on is that there was a masculine component, masculine component in society and in families. And you did not have a constant bombardment glorifying dysfunction. You can start with Nikki Giovanni, who went around the country in the late 1960s advocating supposedly on behalf of young women uh, mm -hmm. a single parent status. She said, the worst thing you can do is bring a, a man into the picture trying to raise children. So don't have a husband, just get pregnant. You started getting this kind of thing spread around the country. Mm -hmm. And now you've got the spectacle of 13 years ago, the Defense Department in 2011 wrote a series of papers where they were alarmed about the decay in status of the mental 
toughness of recruits. They said, we can make you physically strong, but we can't make you mentally tough. You have to come in here that way. And we're finding that that is no longer the case because they found that when you put all ethnicities, all ethnicities in the mix, 42% of the Americans 35 and under were born out of wedlock. And when it came to 20 and under, it was over 80%. That's all races and ethnicities. So it's not just the black thing. Um, Will you say there's a difference bet- between Jim Crow and segregation? Like I did my own podcast yeah, show. Yeah, same in one sense. Jim Crow was a character in the men- on the menstrual circle developed in Atlanta. And one manifestation of it was Uncle Remus who was a character that was created in the Atlanta area. And Walt Disney used to have an interesting little thing that he did on a regular basis. It was called Uncle Remus. They had cartoon rabbits and bear and foxes, and they had an old black man with a gray beard. And the plot line was he was upset because these Northern invaders had liberated him from slavery where he was happy and taken care of and he could go zippity doo zippity day my oh my what a wonderful day plenty of sunshine hit it my way zippity doo wonderful day so he was used to being a happy carefree something or another and he resented being turned loose on the world by these northern invaders and that was a regular feature of walt disney in the 40s and 50s now they try to hide it if you ever can catch any of them watch them they're completely embarrassing much worse than amos and andy which at least had some redemptive value in terms of social observations well some people say some people will say and agree that Seg- black people did better under segregation. No, we didn't do better under segregation. Hell no, I went through it. There was no way in hell. That is some kind of misconception. That is a complete historical, uh, That that is historical revision. That is crap. The relationship of black folk to the rest of the world when they had segregation was exactly the same as what you see in a park today, public park where it says, no dogs allowed, dogs must be on leash, dogs can be off leash, be cautious. You see, in other words, you were treated like you were a dog, you had to be on leash, you couldn't go over here, you couldn't go over there, but it was okay for the Negro to be over there. And the attitude toward all of us was kind of like, It's like going to a zoo. You have these fascinating African apes, which we find uh, interesting to stare at because, oh God, they look so human, gorillas and chimpanzees. But back then they said, these fascinating African apes, chimpanzees, gorillas, and these Negroes. And that's kind of the way we got treated. So there was nothing at all good Black folk were not doing better under. What happened was that there was a period of time that is in here when you started getting the welfare state, when you started getting glorification of dysfunction, Black Caesar, Superfly, Foxy Brown, and all of the rest of this garbage that they put out there, Black exploitation where they wanted to get the maximum amount of money out of the black community. So they appeal to the lowest do- uh, common denominator. In other words, let's make it exciting. Let's not talk about something boring about an actor like Sidney Poitier playing the detective, you know, who straightens out some white folk when he's on vacation in the South from Making Chicago. Yeah, let's deal with pimps, hoes, drug dealers, gangsters, thugs, murderers, burglars, robbers, rapists, drug dealers, and glamour, uh, glorify them so we get all these. Are they, do they call them Negroes now, or are they black, or is it Afro-American? 
oh my God, it's so confusing, but whatever they are, we can bring them out if we just appeal to them. They'll like seeing themselves. And meanwhile, they don't get the idea that this is okay. Mm -hmm. Who is that Sidney Potter? Uh, Poiti? Is he French? He's a big guy. Isn't he? Doesn't he play basketball or something? He's 6'5 or whatever he is. Oh my God. Yeah, Sidney Poitier is, was a big guy, six feet five something. So, you know, it's what they do. Black man what with they dignity. did. Yeah. And now we're stuck on stupid, don't know. Don't get any history about it and build our own little false narrative, historical revisionism. Black folk had it better under segregation. Hell no. I don't know what kind of little scurrilous wimp you happen to think of yourself as, but enduring somebody telling you where you could go, when you could go, whether you could go, and mm -hmm. when you had to leave like you're some kind of animal off leash, no. I think people trying to make the correlation of, well, because we had to be separate and couldn't enjoy the same things as white people that forced us to create our own, but that's not necessarily true because yes, we created our own, but it wasn't on the same quality. No. And some places like Chicago, they weren't that kind of segregated, but they had segregation There were certain neighborhoods. Blacks wouldn't dare go in mm -hmm. other places, South, Hell yes. It's like dogs over there, people over here, Negroes over there, and dogs and Negroes stay on leashes unless they're behind the fence. Right. Um, California outlawed discrimination in its state constitution adopted in 1851. So there were places you could go where there was no official discrimination like that. But it was hell. You have no That's, idea what that was. Right. Because, right. When you said no official, because it's really the public policies. There were public policies put in place that I don't want to say held black people back. But during that time, Jim Crow, it was a, it was it was more of a fight to get ahead because of public policies. And that's what makes it worse. So segregation is one of the pillars under Jim Crow. And like you were saying, we did not have it better. We were not better off, you know, and IE, if there were public policies, you know, um, that were passed on a state level, was there any public policy you passed on a federal level? To yeah, that's how it started at Brown v. Board of Education. Yeah. So and that, that said, uh, that on did Plessy versus Ferguson, it says, Separate but equal is inherently unequal. There is no way to equalize them. So we find it abolished. They put an unfortunate language in there. Mm -hmm. Desegregation is to proceed with all deliberate speed. So in other words, take your time the way it was interpreted and people drug their feet. See, that's I don't think any, anybody who lived through segregation, such as yourself and in in the generation before you, y'all don't y'all y'all all y'all say collectively, no, we did not have it better. Oh, no, no, it was not better I, for black people. It was worse. I'll give you an example. My mother was a librarian at Tuskegee Institute in Alabama. They took the children, kindergarten, first grade, second grade, and we had to have these lectures where they would tell us. You may be from another part of the country, but you cannot go certain places. You must be careful when you see this. They even had us in classes so we could recognize white people versus black people and the difference between fair skinned blacks and white people and say, these are not safe. These are okay. Do not children, boys and girls do not go these places. And it was 100% black with black teachers and everything. And then a few months later, we wound up in Los, well, California. And I was in classes with white kids, Mexican kids, Asian kids, Jewish kids, Catholic kids, Protestant kids. It was all mixed up. And we had black teachers, white teachers, Asian teachers, 
Hispanic teachers, and it was like a total different thing. And then you go down for a summer vacation right back in there. They'd give you that lecture. Don't go over there. It is not safe. You watch out for this, watch out for that. And even after they had Brown v. Board of Education, you had one of Biden's mentors, Falbus, who stood in the doorway of Little Rock High School. Long as I'm governor of this here state, we will have no Negroes or Negroes going in this high school. Mm -hmm. And Eisenhower had to send the 101st Airborne down there. See, <laughs> it was, we were all aware of this kind of stuff, or at least we were in certain places. Yeah. But we found out there were backwoods areas where people just, they didn't get this because there was a form of censorship. This kind of thing was not permitted for Negroes, colored, whatever to see. So, but just to go back to Byron um, Donalds, um, he was not saying black people had it better. He was only going to the data of black families and the importance of black families, black fathers. And when you do have a strong family unit, mother, father, you know, husband, wife, you, you create more, you create a more middle class, black middle class. You can create generational wealth quicker, you know. So is he was talking to the importance of black families, not Yeah, he was. See, all he was doing is making an observation. Right. It was just coincidental. The status of the black family as a cohesive unit was not because of segregation. It happened to exist when segregation exists, as did the cohesion of white families. Brown families, yellow families, red families. And what happened in the process of ending this kind of insidious, overt legal segregation, there was also a contemporaneous thing that went along with women's rights. And part of the fallout on the women's rights was they wanted to escape from what they characterized as the slavery of marriage. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there was this great deal of what should be conflated is the feminist movement and the negative impact that it had on the family. Right. 